is not a message that is designed to make anybody shout or dance. Uh, that's not one that evokes spontaneous speaking with tongues. Uh, it is rather the kind of message that if we hear it properly, it makes us sit for a moment and take personal inventory. Uh, James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, uh, because to hear and not do is like a man who beholdeth his face in a glass. And then what does he do? And walks away and straightway, immediately, he forgets what manner of man he was. In other words, he said to look in the mirror and see what needs to be fixed. And then you don't even bother to try to fix it. <laughs> uh, that's what it's like when you hear the word and don't do it. One thing we must understand that this book that is called the Holy Bible, uh, it is the Christian's rule book. It is the manual. Um, if you have an automobile, a computer, or almost anything that is uh, high tech, uh, you need to be acquainted uh, with the operating manual uh, because the operating manual tells you how uh, to properly operate that particular equipment and many times tells you what to do if that equipment uh, is somehow out of order. And the Bible, as they said when I was a little boy growing up, is not written to sinners. Those of you who think that all of these critical scriptures that uh, tell people what they should not do, that this is to the sinner, you're wrong. The only thing written to the sinner uh, is that he should repent of his sins uh, and that he should receive Jesus Christ as Lord. But this book is written for you and me because although we have confessed uh, Christ as Lord and have even been filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, there are many of us who find ourselves walking in a way that is contrary to the Word of God. Um, it's easy to correct problems when you see yourself in the mirror of God's word if you have the right spirit. But if you have a wrong spirit, you can see yourself in the mirror and still try to say, boy, I wish Henrietta and John Henry had been here today. I tell you, Bishop was on that case. Now, the Lord has everybody here whom he wants to hear this. And it's not for somebody who's not here, but it is for you and me. Let's look briefly at the scene. Uh, Luke, I must confess that sometimes Luke confuses me. Uh, the reason I say that is because Luke is the only one of the four gospel writers who in writing to Theophilus, uh, he says something about putting in order those things that uh, you have heard. And yet when I read the writing of Luke, so much of what he says does not fit in chronological order. Here we are in the ninth chapter, but verse 51 says it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. So in other words, this incident happened not early in the ministry of Jesus, but it happened later in his ministry. Actually, it happened about the time he was going to Jerusalem for the last time to be offered up 
as an offering for your sins and mine. He's traveling with his 12 disciples whom he called apostles, and they have been traveling for some distance. He is tired, and uh, the night shades are beginning to appear, and he and his disciples attempt to find lodging for the night. So he sends them ahead for them to prepare so that he does not have to get there and try to inquire for a room, but he sent those disciples in advance. But as they begin to explain who they are trying to gain accommodations for, these Samaritans are disturbed. And Jesus and his disciples, at such an inopportune moment, they become the victims of both ethnic and religious differences. When they saw that his face was set toward Jerusalem, in other words, they would have given him a place to lodge had he been going to Samaria and was going to leave Samaria and then go back to Galilee. But when they recognized he was only using Samaria as a night stopover point, but was going on to Jerusalem, they decided you cannot stay here. Now, you got to understand that people of the world will do things that are inhumane, in, uh, you know, in, uh, how shall I say that? <laughs> Insensitive. Uh, they'll do things that uh, they're thoughtless. Huh? They'll be brutal. But you expect that from people who don't know any better. The problem is that the disciples of the Lord reacted badly to a bad situation. The Samaritans acted up and the disciples acted up just as bad. I'm trying to say something. Many of you face situations on your job, in your classrooms, sometimes even in your home, in your neighborhood. You even face some situations sometimes at church. Things that where people have acted totally out of character. But you should never be guilty of reacting to somebody else's bad actions. Um, maybe, I, maybe I need to preach to the choir and the orchestra. It, it doesn't matter how other folk act with you. You ought to have a code by which you live. Now, you got to understand that these men had been taught by Jesus Christ. They had been taught that you are not to render evil for evil. They had been taught that if somebody sues you for your coat, give them the cloak also. They had been taught that if somebody smites you on one cheek, Turn the other. But when these Samaritans refused to give them a place to sleep that night, that thing was, Master, give us permission. You, you don't have to do it. We'll do it for you. We'll call down fire from heaven and burn them up and then tried to add a scripture to their madness. I mean, you know, like Elijah did. 
You got to understand that the Bible teaches whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. You are not to try to emulate or imitate the bad actions of people in Scripture. The Lord wants you to imitate David when it comes to being a praiser. But he doesn't want you to imitate David by taking your neighbor's wife and then killing him as a cover-up. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. There's so much in the scripture that we look at different individuals and God would have us to imitate the good in that person, but not the bad. Who are these men that talked about calling down fire from heaven? As I said to you earlier, they were not people of the world. They were not the sinners. These were followers of Jesus Christ. My, my. Well, I know that we like to say when people act up, act out of character, we like to say, they ain't saved no how. <laughs> well, you really can't say that. Because the foundation of God standeth sure. The pastor doesn't know. You don't know. Only God knows them that are his. You can't judge persons always by their conduct because your conduct is not what saves you. You got a lot of folk who have good conduct, but they have never claimed Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I don't care how good their conduct is, if Jesus is not their Lord, they are not saved. But you got some folk with, who have claimed Jesus as Savior, but they got some ways that need to be worked on. <laughs> These men were not just members and followers of Jesus, they were on the inner circle because the two who talked about calling down fire from heaven were James and John. And many times when Jesus left the bulk of his disciples behind, he took that three-man inner circle, Peter, James, and John. <laughs> One good example of him doing it uh, we, we talk about that uh, woman with the issue of blood. Uh, but understand now, that woman was not the focus. Jesus had just come into that area, and Jarius, the ruler of the synagogue, told him, I have a, a daughter that is at the point of death. And Jesus said, all right, I'll go with you. And while he was en route to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue of blood just somehow popped up and touched the hem of his garment. And he was delayed long enough with her that Jairus' daughter died. And when he got to Jairus' house, here were the mourners. They were just mourning. And Jesus told them, oh, stop all of this moaning. The girl's not dead. And then they start laughing. And the Bible said they laughed him to scorn. But what does Jesus do? He takes with him Peter, James, and John, Jairus, Jairus' wife, and Jesus himself, the six of them enter that bedroom where the girl, the daughter of Jairus was lying in the bed. And you know a miracle is about to happen because God had seven. He had his perfect number. And James and John were right there in the room. Well, that's another time he goes to the mount that we call the Mount of Transfiguration. He left nine disciples down at the bottom of the mountain. Didn't take nobody with him to the top but Peter, James, and John. 
So, I mean, these fellows who are following Jesus with a bad attitude, they are inner circle people. Uh. Isn't it sad that when there are people who have the opportunity to be leaders in the church, people that hold office, uh, people who are around the leader, and then they have bad attitude. They were not only in a circle people, but they were gifted. I mean, you look at it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Uh, third chapter of Mark. That when Jesus called his disciples, gave them power against unclean spirits to heal the sick. James and John, they were right there. So you would think that here these men are not only in a circle people, but they have spiritual gifts. I've seen folk that can speak in tongues, preach, teach, sing, and just electrify a house. And yet, they have bad attitudes <laughs> and following Jesus with the wrong spirit. I told y'all I'm glad you already shouted. This one, this one isn't, this isn't the shout of the day. This is, this is, this is self-examination time. Master, let us call down fire from heaven. Let, let's burn these folk up. I, I want to tell you something. When I was growing up, so many times I would hear the saints, and, and I mean boasting over the fact that, uh, you know, such and such a person, you know, they crossed me and now see they own that bed. They, 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 something happened to them now. And, and I hear people even now. But I want to tell you something. I would submit to you that God is not going to kill somebody because you and them had a disagreement. And, and let me also go a little further. It's wrong of you to expect God to do somebody harm. Even if they did mistreat you. You know, trying to be open, uh, I, I have a lot of people that come through here, and sometimes I hear some things right here from this pulpit that shock me. Um, I, we, we had a preacher um, last year uh, that preached one Sunday and uh, went back to that passage of Scripture, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. But when he got through with it, it was let God arise and let my enemies be scattered and be destroyed. And he even gave some examples of some folk that didn't do them so right. Uh, but I praise God that uh, to your credit, the majority of you all didn't buy that. You know, because when you buy that into that vindictiveness, that is not the spirit of Christ. Yes, I know what God did to the enemies of Israel back in the Old Testament. And I know how God will cut this one down and that one down. But it was not because so much of them rising up against Israel. It was because they challenged Israel's God. It's a difference between somebody challenging you and challenging your God. When a person challenges my God, he will get cut down. He may get by for a while, but after a while, when you sin against God, I mean, here's the situation in that 20th chapter, I believe it is, of 1 Kings, where the Syrians and the Israelites got into a fight 
and, and uh, they were fighting up in the mountains and uh, the Israelites destroyed the Syrian army and while the Syrians are on their way back home and, and, and they wanted to know, their king wanted to know, how did you let Israel whip you? And they said, well, because Israel's God, gods of the hills, next time if we fight them in the plain, we'll defeat them because their God can't give them victory in the plain. Their God is only able to give them victory in the mountain. And the next encounter, it talks about how many Syrian soldiers there were and how few Israelites there were. But the man of God, a prophet, came and told the king, because the Syrians said that I am a God of the mountains and not of the valley, God said, I'm going to whip them. I'm going to give you a great victory. But the reason I'm doing it is not for your sake. They had the audacity to try to limit me. And I want you to know anytime somebody tries to limit my God, they are in trouble. They're not in trouble for challenging Gilbert Patterson. But don't you dare challenge Gilbert Patterson's God. Because the God that I serve is the one that scooped out the sea with the palm of his hand weighed the mountains in a scale and the hills in a balance. You can't challenge him. He's the God that controls the lightning and the thunder. He's the one that made you and me. And it doesn't matter what goes wrong in your body. He is Jehovah Rapha. He's the one that can heal. You ought to tell somebody, don't challenge him. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. These men had a wrong spirit. They were followers. They were gifted followers. But the Lord had to let them know that the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He said the same thing in John 10 and 10. The thief, he doesn't have any other purpose. He comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. God is concerned about our spirit. If we have a right spirit, we go a long ways not only with God, but with man also. I talked on this past Tuesday night uh, about Daniel. Uh, Daniel in chapter 6. See, he had been down there in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar kept him elevated because of his spirit. And when Nebuchadnezzar's spirit got contaminated and God caused him to go out like a wild animal, out in the weather, fingernails growing out like bird claws, mm. till he was willing to admit that there is a God in heaven. And when Nebuchadnezzar died, he had a son named Belshazzar. And Belshazzar one night had a drunken ball. In fact, it lasted for weeks. And he stopped drinking wine out of their holy vessels. And the Lord uh, decided to end his kingdom right that night. Oh, you, you remember the story? There came four fingers of a man's hand. Uh, th there was no elbow, there was no torso, nothing but fingers right. And all those men who had been drunk, all of a sudden, they sobered up. Do, do you see? It can't be for real. Oh, yeah, it is. Somebody read it. And they call for the soothsayers and the magicians and the psychics. Sister Cleo, come on, read this. <laughs> Couldn't nobody read it. They said, well, there's a fellow by the name of Daniel. He has the spirit of the God of heaven in him. Maybe he can read it. 
Daniel walks in and says, what do you want me to read? He says, over there on that wall. Yeah, well, you're talking about many, many, TKL, you far scenes. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. You weighed in the balances and found warning. And tonight your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Is that what you want me to read? <laughs> and that night, Belshazzar was killed. And God gave the kingdom over to the Medes and the Persians, creating the Media Persian Empire. And the Median king named Darius, or Darius, as we used to call him, he became the king. And at the beginning of chapter 6, as he set in order his kingdom, he appointed 120 princes to be over the realm. And then he took three presidents and put those three presidents over the 120 princes. And out of the three presidents, Daniel 6 and 3 said he chose Daniel to be over everything because he had an excellent spirit. I don't know why it is that we think uh, retributive spirits, vindictive spirits, I don't care how long it takes me, I'm going to get even with you. That kind of spirit, that won't take you anywhere. But when you have the right spirit, the Lord said, if your ways please me, uh, I'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Oh, I'm, I'm getting ready to close here. But even in that Psalm 51, I mentioned earlier about the sin of David. But when David repented of his sin, after Nathan the prophet told him, you are the man, Nathan never would have gotten in the door had he not walked in with a parable. If he had walked in saying, I need to see King David because he's killed Uriah and took his wife, David uh, security would have never let him in the door. But he said, I got an urgent matter for the king. What is it? Well, there is a man that has uh, all of these sheep, all of these herds. And there was another man that had one little ewe lamb. And don't you know that this man, instead of killing one of his thousands, took the other man's little ewe lamb, killed it and dressed it for dinner. King, what do you think ought to happen to such a man? David said that kind of man ought to be put to death. Then Nathan pointed his finger at him and said, thou art the man. God gave you a kingdom. He gave you anything that your hearts desire. If you had needed more, God would have also given that to you. But look at what you did. You killed Uriah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Yes, I know that you didn't do it with your own hand, but you put him in the forefront of the hottest battle and then commanded all of the other soldiers to withdraw from him. So you murdered him as surely as if you had done it yourself. At this point, David broke down and repented. And Psalm 51 records his prayer. And when he prayed, he had to tell the Lord that I need you to have mercy on me, O oh God. I need you to wash me. I also need you to purge me with hyssop. And then I need you, O oh God, to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. This isn't the spirit that I had when Samuel anointed me to be king. This isn't the spirit that I had when I played on my harp and evil spirits departed from Saul. This isn't the spirit that I had when I went dancing before the ark of the covenant. 
somewhere my spirit got contaminated and I need you to create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I got the clothes, but somebody quit worrying about what other folk will say. Don't worry about who will see you come to the altar. But if you know you're still in church, you're still following Jesus, but your spirit is not what it used to be, uh, you need to say, Lord, wash me again. Clean me up again. Restore unto me your joy. Give me back a right spirit. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Mm. Yeah. I, I know that the message didn't touch everybody. And then there's some of you that built up such a shell until even though God aimed it at your heart, it didn't get through because of your wall of defense. But somebody in here today, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's from long-term grudges. Uh, I don't know what it is. But somehow this message, I had to deliver it. Uh, from the time the Lord gave me that, I've changed about five times in the last 24 hours. But the Lord sent that message because there's somebody that needs a spiritual revival. Don't, don't you worry about anybody else. But if you know you're in that number, you're not where you used to be in God. You're still following, but your spirit somehow got contaminated. You need to come even now while we're singing yes. 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 Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. My soul says yes. 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 Hey, 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 hey. My soul, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, come on and let it ring out. Yes! Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My, 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 my. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, you know, I once heard it described like a sore that does not heal, tender down underneath, uh, over the top. Uh, yes, you've got that rough skin, but if you just kind of mash on it, the soreness is down on the inside. God sent his word today like a doctor's scaffold to open up that thing so that you don't try to hide it anymore. And you just need to open that thing up and tell the Lord what it is. Some of it goes all the way back for years. Somebody that took advantage of you and you haven't been able to forgive them. But you just gotta realize the Lord says, vengeance is mine. You don't have to worry. God said, I'm going to do the payback. Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. But you ought to just open that thing up to God today and just tell him, Lord, I want you to heal. Heal my broken heart. Heal my troubled mind. Take this thing away from me, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to renew a right spirit in me. Oh, oh, oh. God, do it today. Touch these that are on the altar. Touch with your own hand. In the name of Jesus, heal that brokenness. Heal that wound. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make your child able to forgive. Make them able, oh God, to quit carrying this thing. They've carried it too long. But this is your day of healing. This is your day of deliverance. Set them free right now. Yay! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to be free. I need to be free. I need to be released to have a free spirit to serve you with all that is within me. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on and begin to praise him. Come on and give him glory. Elders, you need to go through here and just lay hands on the people. Just begin to touch. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, will God heal you. God heal your wounded spirit. God, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you prayerful missionaries, you're all in here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, receive his touch. Receive his anointing. Receive his power. Receive his strength. In the name of Jesus. Ah, you'll never be the same again. Go and give him praise. Praise your way through here. Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! All over this building! Give him praise! Give him glory! Give him honor! The Lord just told me to tell somebody down here that physical condition, that miracle of healing. God said right now, if you can forgive that individual that you've been holding that thing against, God said with your with your forgiveness comes your healing. With your forgiveness comes your healing. Give that thing up. You've been carrying it too long. It hasn't hurt the other individual, but it's about to destroy you. Give it up and your healing comes. Come on of us Sunday. Come on and praise him now. Praise him for that healing. Oh, what a wonder about Jesus. What a wonder about Jesus. Oh, Lord.
Oh, hallelujah. Now listen to what the Lord is saying. It's in this song. You will never be the same again. Since Jesus came in, a new life began. You will never be the same again. Now sing it to somebody. I will never be the same again. <laughs> say that any of you who came down today to give your life to Jesus you've never confessed him as Lord and Savior I want you to remain down here I don't want you to go back I want you to remain you who want to make this your church home the door of the church is open hallelujah My, 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 my. You that want to be saved and you that want to make this your church, stay right down here. Hallelujah. Anyone else? I'll never be the same again.
just before I step down to shake hands with these who have come, I want to take just another 30 seconds to say that if there's anyone in this building, and I know the whole entire altar and uh, invitational appeal went differently today. So let me take just a moment to explain it to you. That at this point, if there's anyone in this building who entered this building unsaved, without a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and today you're ready to give your life to him, you need to get up and come right now. If there's anyone in here that's already saved, the Bible says that he said it, the solitary in families. Now that word solitary refers to loneliness, one. I don't care how you say I'm saved, but I'm not a member of any church. God wants you, God bless you young lady. God doesn't want you out there solitary. He doesn't want you out there by yourself. He has provided a church family for you to be a part of. And if you're already saved and you believe this is the family where he wants you, then this is your opportunity to get up and come. If you want to be saved, come now. If you want to make this your church home, come now. Oh, my soul, like the sea, below the road, since Jesus came into my I'm not going to prolong it. You still got 15 seconds, and I know you're here. Bless you, young lady. Where the other seven, seven more that the Lord is speaking to. Bless you, young man. Six more. Come now. The Lord is speaking. Whoever you are, get on up. Come now. There are six of you. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. Except I know that you're in this building. Because the Holy Ghost would not say it if you were not here. There are six of you. Come now. Bless you, my sister. There are five more. Give him praise, saints. While the Holy Ghost is breaking through. Come on, my brother. There are four more. Bless you, my sister. There are three more. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God bless you, young lady. There are two more. Hallelujah. And here they are now. Hallelujah. Yet there's one more note that the Lord is speaking to. Who are you? One more note that God is speaking to. Hallelujah. Floods of joy for my soul like the sea. Hill Road Since Jesus Came into God bless you Come on and give God praise In the house I'll give him praise for these souls Glory to Jesus God bless you Bless you, my brother. All right, son. All right. Oh, somebody ought to be praising you. Boston. All right. From Boston, Massachusetts. My God, how long have you been in this? You know, this is what... Let, let me just... Listen at this for just a moment. Our sister's just saying she came all the way from Boston 
She hasn't even uh, actually gotten herself fully located, but just got here joined, to join this church. Let, let, let me tell you something. Before, before we entered this building, I might have told some of you all this. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes was in the city as my guest for the 1998, I believe it was, Soul Winners Conference. And we walked around in the shell here, and I just showed him everything. And he stood up there somewhere. And he said, you know, Bishop Patterson, you're going to be surprised at people who are going to uproot from other cities and move to Memphis with the main intention being only to worship here at this church. My, 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 my. God bless your heart. Glad for you. Oh, somebody ought to praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Vicki. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Oh, isn't it wonderful? God bless you. All of these souls that the Lord has brought. Yes. I'm going to say, I'm Brother Larry's daughter. Yes. I've been not, I haven't been here in 10 years. And I'm at home, I'm on the Praise Last God. Night it came down on me. Hallelujah. And I'm here, I'm back, Bishop. Praise God. Brother Willie Larry's daughter. She so hasn't been here in 10 years, but she's back. Well, I'm going to be all right. The Lord is a healer. And our prayers are with you. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. All right. God bless you. Yes. You're the one I saw at Wild Oats the other night. Amen. And I th I, I'm trying to, you know, all of us trying to do something about our health these days. So I, I went to Wild Oats the other night to get me a, a juice drink. And ran into this sister, and I told her to be sure and come today. And praise God, she's come all the way. And I'm so glad for you. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. You, you'd be surprised if you all do a little witnessing. Johnny Gooseby's daughter. Well, God bless you. Good to have you here. You all be surprised if you do a little witnessing how it would pay off. Uh, I think I need to say that again. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them you'd be surprised if you would do a little witnessing how it would pay off. No, no, it makes me wonder that, that when you really have Jesus on the inside, the joy of having him is sharing him. Now, would it be that some of y'all are not giving him away because you don't have him? Let, let's get more involved in witnessing, telling people about the God that you serve. Come on, give him a hand of praise. God bless you, Mother Deola. 